Hi, everyone. My name is Zeyu Lei, and I'm here to present our paper on the security of SMS one-time password messages against local attackers in modern mobile devices. Before we start, first, let's discuss what is SMS OTP. SMS OTP is text messages containing a one-time password, and it's used for authentication by many apps, especially messaging apps uh, like WhatsApp, Telegram, Fiber, Kakao Talk. All those apps actually use the SMS for authentication. Uh, usually, it will ask you to insert your phone number to the app, and then the server will send you a text message containing one-time password. Usually, it will look like this. Uh, notice it says Telegram code 30645. You can manually read this five digits or click copy and paste, which is easier. Um, after the server gets your code, the server will perform one-time password verification to confirm you are the owner of your own device and therefore allow you to log into your own accounts. Okay, after finishing our prerequisites, I want to first discuss our threat model. It is known that SMS is not safe in many ways. For example, SIM swapping, exploitation of the SS7 network, etc. So there's so many attacks that attacker can do to break SMS. However, instead of focusing on the SMS channel itself, we focus on another threat model, which called local attacks. What is local attack? Apps can read SMS OTP in many ways. In the following SMS authentication scheme, the first step, the client sends the phone number to the server, and the server will respond OTP via SMS. On the third step, the legitimate app needs to obtain the SMS, and it is in this step, local attackers has control over an app installed in the client device. And the goal of local attackers is to steal OTP code in a malicious way. To sum up, we assume the SMS network is safe, and we study what a malicious app installed in victim's phone can do. To the best of our knowledge, no study has systematically analyzed the attacks that local attackers can do and performed a large-scale evaluation to determine the relevance and impact of these threats. Our research aims to fill this gap. As we said before, apps has so many ways to access SMS OTP. The standard way is to ask the user to manually insert the OTP into the app. However, modern devices introduce new mechanisms for legitimate apps to access these OTP codes. We start our study by exploring all the different ways an app can access SMS OTPs in modern Android and iOS versions. And we realize that these different methods can be divided into three categories, user interaction, SMS permissions, and automated APIs. First of all, let's discuss user interactions. For user interaction, apps are trying to ask the user to interact with the app to give one-time access for their SMS OTP. However, user interaction is subjected to phishing attack. User might be confused to insert the OTP in a malicious app. It is a well-known issue. So, new Android and iOS versions introduced new ways to insert OTP codes, not only to ease people's life, but also to improve security. In this picture, other than the traditional copy and paste, you see iOS introduced autofill feature, and Android has this one-tap SMS API feature. And with one click, you will give the app access to your SMS OTP. However, are these new methods improving security? We actually did a user study to confirm. The result shows, first, the deception attack is indeed possible. Second, we found new methods to ease copy and paste do not increase the security. All the details will be included in our paper, so if you are interested in this user study, please check our paper. Other than user interaction, Let's talk about SMS permissions. With the read SMS permission, an app can read 
any SMS OTP. As you see in this picture, this is how Android deal with permissions. If you click allow, you're allowing SMS app to send and view all your SMS messages. And people might say, if you give an app permission, yeah, you're giving them permission. And if your money got stolen, you cannot blame anyone. That's all your own fault, right? Actually, we did a user study to confirm this. We want to verify if user actually understand. And the result shows, yes, user do understand that this permission will allow an app to read text messages. However, the result shows users do not realize that this permission allows to read SMS OTPs and therefore compromise accounts on those apps that use SMS OTPs to authenticate their users, right? So basically, users understand the direct cause of giving this permission, but they do not understand the indirect cause of giving these permissions. Again, if you're interested in knowing all the details of this user study, don't hesitate to check our paper. We finished SMS permissions. Let's move to the automated APIs. The first automated API I want to discuss is create app specific SMS token. Since this is a very long name, I will just say token API in the future. Okay, let me try to explain how this token API works. On the left hand side, we have our client device, and on the right hand side, we have our backend server. First of all, let's assume we have an app called Funny Chat. And the Funny Chat asks the operating system Hey, buddy, can you assign me a random token that only belongs to me? And the OS said, Fine, here's a token. One, two, three, four. Okay, Funny Chat sends the phone number, client phone number, with the token to the server. And the server generates OTP and append the token to the OTP message and send it back to the client. The OS received the message, realized it is a OTP message because there's a token appended in the message in a very specific format. And then the OS parsed the message uh, get the token and realize, wait, one, two, three, four. Two minutes ago, FunnyChat actually requested this token from me. So the intended receiver, the legitimate receiver of this message must be FunnyChat. So the OS decided to deliver the message to FunnyChat. The FunnyChat, which is the legitimate app, obtained the SMS and extract the OTP from the message and send it back to the server. The server will then perform OTP verification, and then <coughs> the server sends a token used by itself to authenticate subsequent interactions. So that is how Token API works. Unfortunately, using Token API for authentication is intrinsically unsafe. Why? Let's check this. We have victim's device on the left and the attacker's device on the right. On the middle, we have our victim's app backend server. Remember we said local attackers has control over an app installed in the victim's device. In this case, it is the malicious app. So the malicious app calls the token API and obtains a malicious token and send it to the attacker. After the attacker received the malicious token, the attacker initialized authentication specifying victim's phone number and the malicious token. So the backend server received this request and sent an SMS to victim's phone number containing the OTP and the malicious token. Okay, now we have a problem. So the OS received the OTP message and parse the token and realize the malicious token belongs to the malicious app. So the OS believe that this OTP message belongs to the malicious app. And the OS will just deliver the token message to the malicious app. The malicious app will read the OTP from the SMS and send it back to the attacker. 
the attacker got the OTP, completes the authentication using the OTP, game over. Other than the token API, Android introduced also another API to access SMS OTPs called SMS Retriever. SMS Retriever works very similar to the token API. The only difference is instead of using and trusting the app provided random token, the server will always send a fixed hash code to the client and the hash code is cryptographically linked to the app. That gives this API proven security. However, some apps use this API in a vulnerable way. Basically, the app will compute dynamically or hard code the hash code and the app send it to the backend server. The backend server sends the SMS OTP containing the app provided hash code. Therefore, an attacker can provide the hash code of a malicious app instead of the legitimate app and the SMS OTP will be dispatched to the malicious app. To sum up, an app's backend server should never send an SMS OTP message containing text provided by the corresponding app. This should be clearly stated in the API documentation. Otherwise, an attacker can provide a malicious token or hash code and makes the SMS OTP message dispatched to the malicious app. Since we already finished all three types of methods to access SMS OTPs, and their attacks. I believe it is a good time to discuss our large-scale analysis. Basically, we want to do a large-scale study on first, how many apps use token API because they are intrinsically unsafe, and second, how many apps use SMS Retriever incorrectly. First of all, we start from 140,000 apps, and which is a lot, so we use a set of heuristic, fast, static analysis to narrow it down to hundreds of apps. And then we used FlowDroid to do some taint analysis to further narrow it down to 129 candidates. Finally, we used dynamic analysis and manual reversion to confirm our results. So for our results, we found 36 vulnerable apps in total. It includes Telegram, which uses token API, and Kakao Talk, which uses SMS Retriever in a vulnerable way. Both apps sharing more than 230 million installations. We also proposed a new API that addresses the issues we have found in the existing ones. We formally verified our new API using ProVerif. If you're interested in knowing all the details about this new API, please check our paper. To conclude, these are the main contribution of our work. We study how local attackers can steal OTP codes. In modern Android versions, apps have new mechanisms to access SMS OTP messages. These new mechanisms try to improve usability and security. However, they open new attack surfaces for local attackers. There are many ways local attackers can steal OTP codes, even when apps use new mechanisms to access them. We want to say thank you to Google, HackerOne, and Telegram for the opportunity they gave us to discuss these topics with them and for the bug bounties they offer us. In our paper, you can find many more details. Feel free to ask us questions now or contact me by email. Thank you for listening.